Hey, good morning. Let's see here. Uh, I was waiting for everything to kick in on both the Facebook and the YouTube platforms, and it looks like we are going live. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Thanks for being here. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent, voiceover career coach, and voiceover demo producer. And uh, we get together every weekday morning to talk voiceover, just to give you a thought or two to start your day to help you uh, succeed in the voiceover business, maybe to help get your head in the right space as you start the day. And um, as you check in this morning, make sure just to get into the uh, the live stream chat here. Let me know uh, where you're watching or listening from this morning. I always like to see that and appreciate you for being here. So today we're going to talk about voiceovers. There's a lot to talk about. The reason this came up um, was several weeks ago. We were, it might, maybe it was during a Friday morning Q&A, uh, but the topic of voiceovers came up and I, I put it out there to you guys. Would you like to, uh, would you like to hear more about voiceovers? Would you like to talk more about it, learn more about it? And I had an overwhelming answer of yes. And uh, so I thought maybe this week would be a good week to take a few days and to cover the, uh, the topic just casually. And I should probably start by talking about my background and kind of what led me into that as well as, the, as voiceover. But my very first, I'll call career job, not the Dairy Queen, not the grocery store where I worked when I was in high school, but when I was a junior in college and the first job that I had that related to, directly to my career was working at a radio station and uh, as I was hired as a commercial copywriter, and it was there that I began to learn the craft of writing commercial copy. And it is a very specific craft. Um, that's why, you know, it's interesting. I'll, I'll hear people who record practice scripts from different websites, and I can tell immediately when it's not been written by a professional copywriter. It becomes very obvious there. And that's, it's out of the scope of this video to get into that. And perhaps that's a topic for another time. Actually, I even used to teach a, a, a class when I was a professor about writing, uh, writing commercial copy because it's a very specific art form. And there's a science behind it as well. It's persuasive um, copy. But all that to say, that was, that, was my, that was my beginning into broadcasting and communications was as a writer. And that writing served me well. I would say, looking back, if I had to rank the things that played into my success in my career over the years, writing, the ability to write, especially when it comes pers persuasively in commercial copy, would rank w maybe number one. If not, it would be a very, very close second. Um, my sales background helped me out a lot too. But wow, uh, because I have written, I, I didn't go back and count individually, but I calculated over the course of my 24 years in broadcasting close to, if not more than 10,000 commercials written, many of them voiced as well. But all of that to say that my background is as a commercial producer. So I had that, you know, that has followed me throughout my career, writing commercials and promos and, and voicing those and, and, and love to do that, feel that that is one of my core competencies. It's one of the things that I'm best at. And um, so when I, when I got into uh, voiceover, and that was, it's been what, 2006. What's the math on that? 16 years ago. And um, I started, um, and, and, you know, I went out and had my first demo produced, went out to Los Angeles and started listening to other demos. I realized that it was a, it was a, a skill set that I could do as well or better than most. And in all humility, uh, I mean, it's just, sometimes you have to assess and you have to understand what you're good at and what you're not good at. And I think I have a pretty good handle on what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And, um, and copywriting is, like I said, it's, it's a core competency for me. It's one of the things that, you know, that I'm best at. And so early on in my voiceover career, I began working, I began producing, and then I found out, you know, and then I discovered over time, um, I was a very good director as well. One of the things I enjoy as a voiceover coach the most is directing people and helping them to get the mo most out of their performance. And when you look at it, then let's, let's, so now let's, let's move over and talk, not about me. I just thought it'd be important to understand where I'm coming from and what brings me to, to this point. But a voiceover demo is kind of like, 
if you want to liken it to something in a job outside of voiceover, it's your resume, it's your CV, it's what people are less interested in your credits. Your credits can be good marketing. It can, you know, it can leave an impression. But more than the, more than saying my credits are and listing, you know, a bunch of uh, brand names that people recognize, more effective than that is when they hear you. You can tell people stuff, but when they actually hear your work, that's what seals the deal. And when I say seal the deal, the demo provides one specific, very specific, um, as one very specific job, and that is to create opportunities. So it doesn't necessarily get you the job immediately. And sometimes it does. I mean, I've had, I don't know how many times people have contacted me and said, hey, I heard your demos, love them. Uh, I've got this job. And that's great. But usually the way it works is, hey, I heard your demos, love your demos. There's this project coming up. I think you might be good for it. Do you mind reading a sample or auditioning? Sometimes it's just a matter of they want to hear me read their script first. Sometimes it's auditioning with, you know, a few other people for the job. But the dem or the demo's job, the demo or the demos, and we'll talk more about that later, not today, but um, maybe tomorrow or day after in terms of demos, what kind of demo or demos should you have and why. Um, it creates opportunities. When somebody hears a demo, here, it's, it's staging. It is staging. And uh, you've heard pr me probably say this a thousand times before, but it is so true. It's like when you stage a house for sale. And if you've never sold a house, then maybe this analogy doesn't land and, and really connect and, and make sense. But if you ever have, the light bulb should go on. And that is, um, if you're trying to sell a house and you could be selling the exact same house, let's say of, of your neighbor next to you, same model, same exact house, built at the same time. But if you take the time to stage your house for sale, meaning you make sure the lawn is as green as it can be and weed free. Everything, it, it's the, the lawn is manicured inside the house, fresh paint. Uh, maybe you've even uh, rented some furniture for sta staging to bring, make it look current and up to date. It creates an emotional impact on the person who sees it. So all things being equal, except that your house is staged, your house will number one, sell faster and probably for considerably more money than your neighbors. And you say, but it's the same house and it's easy to paint. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't matter. People, they go with what makes them feel good when they see it. They can imagine themselves living there. Your demo allows your prospective client to imagine your voice on their project. And if it's done properly, it should, it should make them want to hire you for that job. Uh, I always tell clients and students that I work with is that your demo, when fully produced, should sound like it was ripped right off of national TV, off of ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, or some major network as a highly produced agency level commercial. That's the way, the direction, your delivery, and that, you know, the, a director, a good director can bring that out of you. I can't tell you how many people have, um, I, I produced their demos and they were just literally just getting started, but with good direction, it's amazing what people can do. Um, and then when it's produced correctly, when I say produced, production is a whole science of its own. My goodness. It's not just slapping music on something. I mean, it certainly can involve music and the right music, which is a whole other discussion. And then mixing that, which is a whole other discussion. And we won't have time to get into all of the, the various aspects of minutia of production because it's a very specific art form. Uh, but when you get into sound effects and music, if it's all done properly, it should have an emotional impact, much like your audition. You know how I say that the way to win the job is you have to make them feel it. Your demo is going to make them feel it. And when it does, it creates opportunities. Now, let me just share one or two other thoughts and then I'll wrap up this morning. And that is, you've probably heard me talk about DIY, do-it-yourself demos. One of the advantages of the many platforms that have developed over these few recent years, and because of technology, um, we don't have to go through agents, thank goodness, anymore. It's a um, opportunity and voiceover has been democratized 
virtually anyone who wants to get into voiceover has an opportunity if they're willing to do the work. It's not a matter about getting an agent anymore. Um, where was this thought I was going with that, with the voiceover? Uh, <laughs> oh, man, don't grow older. That's all. That's my advice for you this morning. Um, but the demo needs to sound, as I said earlier, like it was taken off of a national TV commercial. That's, that's, that's what your demo producer has to do for you. Because until they hear it, again, you can tell them, and even your, your audition itself will help. But when they hear a demo that's fully produced, that is what creates the opportunity. Now, the DIY demo, going back to what I was talking about earlier, is now you can now do it to get started because there are platforms like Upwork and other freelance platforms. And you can get uh, my students. I have students who get work that way and save up the money for a demo, a pro demo, because pro demos aren't cheap. They're expensive because it's, it's a highly... Uh, it's it's not a skill set that everybody has, and there's certainly uh, you know quite a bit of time that that, that goes into it. Uh, and you can get by with a DIY demo if you can't afford a pro demo up front. If you can, it's going to save you time, a lot of time and energy because it's going to make you competitive faster in your marketing efforts. Uh, but with a DIY demo, you can begin to get work. It's going to take a little longer, but that's a, you know if you don't have the money, that's okay. You know that way you can. Get, get on uh, Voice Bunny, get on Fiverr, get on Upwork, get on freelance.com or whatever, you know, there's a, there's a whole plethora of freelance websites out there. Get out there and start, you know, making, making some money, save it up, then get the pro demo, which is going to take you to a whole, a whole other level. It'll open up doors of opportunity that would not be available with a DIY demo. And that's, we'll stop it at that point on the discussion today and we can pick it up tomorrow. And you may, if you have questions regarding that, throw it in the, uh, in the live stream. And then I can refer back to that as I continue to talk about, about voiceovers. But uh, this morning, just wanted to, to begin the conversation to say, if you're going to be a long-term full-time voiceover talent, having a professionally produced demo at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later, is, is a big deal. It's important. All right, let's take a look at the uh, let's look at uh, the stream here and see who's on. We've got <clears throat> George or Jorge from Houston. Good morning, Tim. In the Dallas Fort Worth area, can't wait for a demo. Hey, Dennis. Good morning, David in Louisville. Matt, he's in the booth in Orlando. I love it in the booth. That's a good place to be. Ed, Steve. Hey, Anthony, good morning from Brooklyn. What's up, Andrew in California? Steve in Oshkosh. Doug in rainy Indianapolis. Hey, Jay, what's up? Ron in Kuwait. Good morning, Ron. Thanks for being on the stream this morning. I hope you are doing well. Uh, Jeremy in Austin. Joe in Miami, <laughs> sweltering Miami, he says. <clears throat> hey, Rob, what's happening? Rob is awake and alive. That is a good way to start today in Loveland, just down the street. Um, good morning, Dave in the UK. Janet, Fleming Island, Florida. All right. Hey, Doug in Greensboro, how are you doing? <laughs> he says he's slowly getting into the industry. <clears throat> Excuse me, he has over 100 of my videos, I think. I want to do one or uh, more one-on-one -on -one training in the future. Fantastic. By the way, yeah, uh, those of you who are interested in learning more about my coaching programs, what I have to offer, as well as demo, demo production, just drop me an email at training at com. training at com, And I'm pretty sure that email is in the description of this video as well. Chris, Denmark, good afternoon to you. The floor of my booth, Chris, is made, it's a, it's a whisper room, so it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'll tell you this, it's darn heavy that I know, but I don't, it's, it's covered like in an acoustic felt material that's heavy duty because my, my chair's on it. So, but I, I honestly don't know what the floor is made out of. I'm sorry. Um, Angela, Central PA, good morning. San Diego, Danny, what's up? Okay. Wow. There's a lot of you guys on this morning. Jeez. This is awesome. 
Uh, demos are expensive, Christopher says, right? A couple thousand. Uh, yeah, I mean, I charge uh, $2,500 for, for a demo, and then uh, which is lower than many. It's more than some. Um, and we'll talk about this later, but you definitely will. You know, you want to shop. Uh, if you're shopping a demo, and I recommend look around. I, I would say there's, of the demos I've heard, I've heard a couple of producers out there who I think are, are, you know, who are, who are good. I don't think there's a lot of good VO producers. And that's one of the reasons I like to do it because I think it's one of the things I'm, I'm best at. And then I'm probably one of the, you know, very competitive within the voiceover industry and on price competitive as well. And when somebody produces a second demo with me, I give them the second one and a half off if we do both, you know, like a narration and um, commercial demo. Riley, Texas, what's going on? We got Daniel in Oklahoma City. Jonathan in Michigan, what's up? Good morning. Pittsburgh, Brandon, Brandy from Idaho. Leo, or I'm sorry, Clay rather, from Guam. Good morning, Clay. Oh, let's see here. It's Hamilton from New Zealand. He's an ex-radio news reader starting the transition to voiceover. All right, Richard. Fantastic. Good to have you here. Conifer from Toronto. Sean in Ann Arbor and Willie in Arkansas. Hey, guys. Thanks again for checking in. We'll, again, we'll keep up the conversation um, going tomorrow, maybe for the next several days, um, just to hopefully illuminate what the, you know, today I wanted to let you know what the demo is, the importance of the demo. And as we talk more about it, we can, hopefully I'll be able to illuminate more about um, the process, uh, what kind of demos you should or shouldn't have, um, you know, marketing with your demo, all of those kind of things. But any specific questions you have, throw into the, the chat. I'll be referring back to this as I, um, you know, do these videos coming up over the next couple of days. Hey guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Have a great day. I look forward